So that's neat, but let's say I want to own that file. Let's say that file was created um, under administrative privileges, but I want to own it forever. So I'm going to type sudo chown nick nick and the file that I want to perform that on is that. Let's say I want to switch the permissions back to 644. Uh, I will retain ownership so I'll be able to write to it as the first column has rewrite access for Nick and that's me. So I no longer need this group column there as well. So what I'm going to type is sudo chmod 644 file.txt. If I run ls again, I can see that the permissions have been changed back so that only the owner of the file can write to it. Cool. Now I'm going to delete that file because I don't need it. So to delete a single file, all you'll do is type rm and then the file name. And if I list again, we do not have a file.txt. Let's create a directory. Uh, and I'm going to create it as administrator. So sudo mkdir, which means make directory. And I'm going to name it my dir. And we can see here that my directory has been created. And we can see the permissions on this. Uh, it's owned by root root. Now, what this means is it's readable, writable, and executable. This means that anybody else can read and execute it. So I can change directory into my dir. This is executing it. So I've just allowed myself to execute that, and uh, that allows me to go into it. Now, let's say I wanted to go back up a directory and use this. Uh, let's create a file actually in that directory. So I'm going to type sudo nano file.txt. Actually, I got to put that in my dir. And the way we do that, again, we specify in the current directory, find my dir and create it in there and hit enter. Now, if I ls my dir, I see that I have a file in there. If I type ls dash l, I can see that the file in there is also owned by the root. Let's make another file. So I'm going to run the previous command. And in, in terminal, you can hit the up key, and you can keep hitting it, and it's going to go up, up, up uh, from previous commands that you've uh, entered. So I see there's two files in that directory that I want to own. As we can see right now, both files are owned by root because I've created them using the super user account. Now, what we're going to do here is uh, a form of the change ownership binary file or a command. And how we're going to do that is type sudo chown and we're going to pass it this argument dash capital R which means it's recursive. Every file in this directory is going to become under the ownership of Nick. So to give a little bit about this command that we're running, um, because it might look confusing, because there are multiple parts to it, we're running it as sudo because we currently don't have uh, permissions to this directory because it's owned in uh, uh, by the root user and group, and we have no write access, so we can't change it. So we're running this command as sudo. chown stands for change ownership. That's the program that we're running. We're passing it this argument, dash capital R, 
to make the command recursive. If I didn't have this in this command, if it looked like this, this would change the ownership of the directory to nick nick, but not the files in it. So capital R as, uh, as an argument there, and then the user and the group that we want to assign ownership to, and then the file or directory that we are going to perform that action on. So when I hit enter and then type LSL, we see now that I've got ownership of this directory. And if I type ls-l on my directory, we can see I've also got ownership on all of the files within that directory. So to recap, we use ch uh, chone to change ownership of a file. We use chmod to change the permissions of the file. Both of these can be recursive by adding dash r to the command. Um, then we define the specifics of the change we're making. So with chmod, it's going to be 755 or 757 or 777. This is just a bad idea if you're running a server, never make any directories ownership 777. Uh, files are one digit less, so 666 would be full uh, uh, modification ability for anybody uh, on a file. We would never do that. Uh, 664 means the owner of the file and the group of the file have read write access um, and the public has read access and 644 means owner has read write group has read and public has read now if we're using the ch own command it's going to be in the format user group and this is going to change the ownership of whatever file we give it to that. And then the last part of each of these two commands is the file or directory that we want to have this effect on. So if I type user share, this is going to give my user all, uh, all the files in this directory are going to become under the ownership of my user and my group. Uh, be careful when you run that because some files need to be owned by root in order to work. Typically, you're not going to be working too much outside of your home directory, but we're going to get there. There are some files you're going to need to change, uh, especially when we set up Apache as the web server and whatnot. So thanks for watching this video. I hope it's been informative. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.